If you're here, you're probably wondering what's going on in the market and you are in the right place. Let's go. Hey guys, this is Hans Strazina with the Gunnerman Group at Keller Williams Luxury International. And on this channel, as you know, uh, we talk about all things East Bay real estate related. Negotiation strategies, how to write offers, things to look out for, as well as uh, just data, news, what's happening, what are the trends, where are we going? And today is a great example of that topic. What's been going on? And I have some good anecdotes for you that I wanna share, a couple of thoughts, a couple of ideas, and some data, of course, uh, to get you going into the month of September and hopefully finish out the year strong with whatever you're doing real estate wise. When you get some value out of this video, hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel because I'm gonna continue to put out weekly content every single Friday, just like this, and you're not gonna wanna miss it. So let's get into this. All right, so couple of quick stories and then we'll get into some data. So number one, uh, this last weekend, my wife and I uh, held this house open that's just a couple blocks away from us on 1100 Peru. It's a beautiful, huge craftsman with this unbelievable corner lot and a big yard uh, that had been featured and awarded in some local uh, yard design shows. And it went pending in, get this, two days. Uh, when, just when we thought the high-end market, just when we thought the market was slowing down, it went substantially over the ask, which I can't share yet, um, but it was a big number. And it went right before we opened the front door of the open house. The offer came in, they accepted it, so we showed it uh, to the open house as a backup. But that is really fascinating to me because typically the high end uh, is what's been slowing down. August was actually really slow for most of the higher end properties. A lot of the middle tier and some of the lower ones were doing fairly well, but not as well as they were, but the high end was struggling. So it was really interesting to see that uh, happen in such a short amount of time. Granted, that's one buyer that was a very specific property um, and it, it had significance and meaning to them personally, not just the uh, buyer pool at large. So. There's a piece of data that I think indicates the strength of our market and where we're at, and I'll show you why I think uh, we got there. But before we do, quick shameless plug, our group has this unbelievably stunning $1.5 million renovation uh, house that is going to be featured in Architectural Digest launching this or next week. Uh, and you gotta check out some of these pictures, this is crazy. All right, so why are we here? Why are there people still paying so high over the comps? What's going on in the market? What are we feeling? Let's get into some numbers. Number one, the conversation around lumber and building supplies in general is trending back towards where we were pre-pandemic. Uh, the supply chain, uh, supply in general has come back and we are now seeing prices come back down for lumber, which is good because it's got people uh, thinking optimistically about where the future is, both from a, where the supply is going as well as a renovation cost situation. And um, it's, it's generally, uh, locally at least, got people saying, oh, well, things are moving in a good direction. It doesn't necessarily impact the existing home sales um, in the very short term. So that anecdote I told you earlier about that huge sale over on 1100 Peru isn't necessarily impacted by lumber, but it is a thing in the psychology of anyone in the real estate space. Lumber building materials costs coming down, that's a good thing for most buyers. So it's kind of creating this little bit of energy and boost that I think um, will carry us into the next month or two. And uh, on top of that, some other things which I'll get into here in a second. So even though mortgage rates bumped uh, slightly, but they did bump up, they are still historically low. And that is the second thing that I'm seeing is, is people are still able to leverage their money really far. So a 20% down payment buys you way more house than it used to because of that rate, because that payment for the same amount of money uh, is a lot smaller and therefore your debt to income ratio lets you afford more house, more purchasing power at the top end. And that's what I'm seeing people uh, still lean into, even though it may not be quite as furious as it was three to six months ago, um, it's still something that is affecting the buyer pool because when you have $100,000 uh, to leverage that with half a point or a full point, that's a big difference on what that final purchase price is depending on loan to value and all that other stuff, right? But because it's so low, it's still giving buyers a huge amount of top end room to keep writing strong offers. This is one that I found really interesting. 
the inventory conversation. Now we talked about lumber just a second ago and it was really clear that lumber and building costs in general obviously have a direct impact on new supply, right? Because if, if you have to build it where it wasn't before, you have to get lumber, you have to get materials, you have to get uh, labor together to build that property. However, what we're seeing is the existing inventory, as you can see with some of these graphs, has finally started to tick upwards from an all-time low, it is coming back up. And that right there, that has a lot of people very excited. Through the month of August and even before that, everyone was like, when's the inventory coming? When's it coming? When's it coming? And it did finally start to tick up. And that has a lot of people kind of slumbering out of their summer fog here and getting back into the market, taking advantage of the low interest rates, potentially taking advantage of construction costs because if they're gonna move in and do some renovation, their budget just got a little smaller. And so um, what I'm seeing is this surge of inventory is bringing a lot of energy back into the market and is getting people pretty excited and, and ready to transact and do some business relative to buying and selling properties. Now, caveat here, September is always a busier month, is a more active month than August. Locally, at least, you always have a slowdown in August. There's a narrative amongst most agents that you list after Labor Day as opposed to before because everyone's on vacation. Uh, this year it was especially true though because a lot of people were on, you know, doing final uh, uh, vacations before kids went back to school. School drop-off was weird. There was all the COVID testing. There was a lot more focus on it. So there were more distractions this month in August than in past years, except for 2020, of course. And and I think a lot more people just took advantage of uh, getting out and getting into the world again, frankly. On top of that, we did have smoke in the air and that always dampens the mood uh, in August. But historically, September always comes back strong and this is absolutely no exception. The question is though, of course, where are we going? What does this mean for the future? In the short term, I think we're gonna see a pretty robust September and probably into October. Long term, like I've talked about in some of my last videos uh, related to where we're going and how we got here, which I'll link to right up here. It's really interesting because again, I think this has to do with affordability. Simply put, people are paying more money now for mortgages than they ever were. I mean, you can see in these graphs, we're up in the double digits over what was going on in 2020. Now that's because prices have gone up so significantly and rates, while they're still very low, haven't gone down at that same magnitude, right? And because there's been such limited inventory, uh, we've found ourselves in a place of an extreme seller's market and people having to compete with one another and drive the price up and up and up and up, right? Well, that's what I see changing. You can see that uh, even though buyer activity is still fairly robust relative to the low uh, interest rates that people are able to get, but you're starting to see inventory start to creep up again. People are putting more houses on the market. When there's more houses on the market and assuming the buyer pool doesn't grow at the same rate, there's gonna be less competition per house, which in principle should lower the price. Now in some houses, it will absolutely stay high because the best houses always sell for the best prices and the worst houses don't, right? but it depends on what kind of inventory shows up. So that will be the real interesting part of this. Is it gonna be new inventory? Is it gonna be stuff that people actually wanna buy or is it a bunch of condos that kind of linger and languish and no one really wants to trade on for whatever reason, right? We saw that in the heat of the pandemic, no one wanted condos, but everyone wanted to go to the hills. What's the next trend gonna be locally in the short term and then in the long term? Ultimately, I think we're in it for a flattening of our real estate market, I don't see the price appreciation go up and up and up further, especially when you consider affordability. How much of people's average uh, salaries or their incomes do they have to put towards their housing? On average in California, we are at a peak of 55%. It's never gone above that. We are darn close if we're not there already. And it is something that is going to represent the breaking point for most people. They're not gonna go over a certain amount of money uh, to get into a house. Now, of course, people could restructure and do different things, but that is historically a number we haven't gone above and we are there or darn close as of today. So even though interest rates are going down, which they probably are gonna go back up at some time in the near future, uh, we are gonna see ourselves in a probably flattening market. Do I think it's gonna crash? Probably not, you never know. 
I only have a limited amount of data, admittedly. Um, but from what I'm seeing on the ground, the amount of cash people are putting down, so therefore the equity cushion, they can absorb a 10% drop, as well as the lending criteria buyers have to jump through. Uh, the people who are getting these mortgages have sound jobs, have income, have reserves, et cetera, right? So we're not gonna see it like it happened last time. That being said, there's gonna be some new input, something that happens that shifts the balance, shifts the way people interact in the market, engage in it, and ultimately that is going to change the dynamic at some point. Who knows what it is exactly, but in general, I believe you should be preparing for a flattening market, a little more inventory showing up, interest rates going up a little bit, that will take a little heat off of everything, and therefore it's just gonna be these sort of micro corrections that over six to 12 months, we'll probably see smaller growth and maybe negative growth, meaning uh, prices going down at some point. So we'll see. But what I'm seeing on the ground in the short term is this. People are still ready to compete. People are still ready to go after the best houses with gusto and they have the finances and the resources and the interest rates to do so. Long term, I think we're in for a flatter market next year, but nonetheless one that will still remain competitive and robust, but maybe just a little less so than we had this year. Fingers crossed for all of us. So if you got some value out of that, give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel because I'm going to continue to put out weekly content just like this and you're not going to want to miss it. So without any further ado, this is Hans Strazina with the Gunderman Group at Keller Williams Luxury International signing off for now. See you on the next one.